Hello, happy Thursday. We've got a special IG Live here that Noelle will be joining me shortly. So I'm actually though kind of excited. So I'm gonna pull a quick Noelle here because it's you know 6 p.m. my time here in London. And whoops, see if it works. Oh, well, I was trying to get it to switch over. I was gonna try to pull a Noelle, but I didn't want to work there because I actually have light outside there. So I'm enjoying the sunlight, even though it was actually snowing a little while ago. Are you serious? Blurry. Yes. Oh, hey. Oh. Hey, Christian. Oh, yikes. So does that yeah. mean I'm going to need to, like, bundle up? Because I'm going to be yeah. there in a couple weeks. I, I think the weather will be all right in a couple weeks with that for graduation. Yeah. I know. <laughs> oh, so we're definitely going to have to, like, do something to give people some motivation to finish this <laughs> program. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, definitely we'll film some stuff from graduation. Yeah. yeah. So how are you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Okay. Finishing up yeah. uh, for this Saturday's webinar uh, in our blind tasting plus theory series. We're going to tackle Grenache. So taste okay. a lot of fun stuff, you know, Chef de Neuf, some Priorat, uh, Cote de Rhone, always delicious. Australian Grenache. Oh my lord, that stuff is gorgeous. With that, just like lip smackingly delicious. I can't remember the last time I've had that. And that really ha that hasn't shown up as a variety for a while. Is that right? On a yeah, flight? It's it, it's been a few years. So yeah. Okay. So it could. I mean, you also figure you got the rose component, Taval. Yeah. Like yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely could Navarra. Show yeah. Okay. Definitely. Well, I posted a a little poll on my my account yesterday, like, how are you guys feeling? And I had the cool with the glasses or the head exploding or the deer in headlights look. And there was very few that said cool with the glasses. Most people, <laughs> most wine students with upcoming exams said they felt head exploding or deer in the headlights. So we're hoping if you fell into one of those camps, um, We've got some tips for you or suggestions for how to spend this last month mm -hmm. um, before your exam and maybe stuff that we did. Yeah. If you can, yeah, if you can recall. So do you want to get us going with something and we'll just kind of ping pong back and forth? Well, I'll tell you the thing that I wish I did more oh. during my diploma exams is I wish I did more practice questions and writing them out by hand. I did a few practice questions and I always type them, you know, because oh. it's easier to get my thoughts together. And, you know, I would write the answers, do it in a time condition without a book. And then I would go back and fluff it. And that was a way, to, and that did help a little bit, but I totally missed out on the handwriting component. And it just, even if you did D4, D5, you know, going through 90 minutes of writing, it's not yeah. a full 90 minutes because you are still doing the tasting component. And so you get your hand a little bit of break. Mm-hmm. In D3, you have one entire day yeah. <laughs> of doing nothing but writing. Yeah. So I, I wish I started training those muscles a lot more, especially for the endurance. Yeah, and I, I think we've mentioned it before, and it, it might sound silly, and you might be like, oh, I can do it. I can handwrite. When was the last time you handwrote for three hours? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, and, it's, and, and under pressure. So, no, that's a very good tip. I did some, but I definitely could have done more. Um, yeah. What I wish I would have done, and I actually read, um, I think it was Mike Best, who is in MW now, is he actually, when he was studying for the MW exam, he went back to his WSET level three textbook and reviewed that. And so mm -hmm. if an MW does that, I highly recommend diploma students Go back to a lower level textbook and just use that as part of your review. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, there's less detail and less analysis, but the content is still there and the concepts are still there. And so I wish mm -hmm. I would have, I had been recommended that by a couple of people and I just kind of ignored it. I kind of poo-pooed it. And then when I look at the questions that I did get on my D3 exam, I was like, you know, 
I could have pulled some good information from, from level three. And that also, mm -hmm. since I already knew the level three material, that would have calmed me down a bit because I think yeah. that reinforces, hey, look at how far I've come. So don't be afraid to pick up that old textbook as part of your review. Because um, mm -hmm. it does, builds a little confidence. It's helpful. Um, and it also is getting messages in your brain in a different way. Because if you just yeah. keep reading those diploma textbooks over and over and over, ugh, you're going to slit your wrists. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, and, yeah. and this actually segues a lot into the blog post that I did on mm -hmm. our, on elevagemindcoaching.com yesterday. And it, it was geared towards people that are just starting out for the exams. Mm -hmm. But there's some things that are really helpful if you're getting ready for an upcoming exam. Because this last month that you're in, yeah, we're about to hit April. So those mm -hmm. that have May exams, we're kind of in that you know last month time period. Yeah. This really isn't the point where you want to be cramming and starting to add new materials into your brain on it. Ideally, you should have at least read the text at least once mm -hmm. <laughs> before this point yeah. on it. And we understand, you know, life gets in the way without yep. a doubt. You know, family, work, and just <clears throat> everything in general happens. Yeah. But the problem is, and I introduced in that blog post, the, the forgetting curve, which is this unfortunate hang, handicap that every one of us has, that our brain, because we get so many different things bombarding us all day, it is hardwired to forget most things. That's a survival, because it would just be overwhelming for us to remember all the little details that we hit throughout the life. Yeah. And that's tough when you're actively studying new material. And so they've done studies after studies to confirm this a forgetting curve that as soon as the next day, you're forgetting things from the day before. And when they did studies over students of what they were learning, like in the classroom setting, over a week, seven days, the students lost about, forgot about 90% of what they learned. 90? Ooh, swings. Yes. Okay. And so that's happening constantly. And that's going to be happening constantly throughout this month leading up to your exam. Yeah. So you don't want to keep inputting, trying to input new and new information. What you want to do is you want to come back to that forgetting curve with things that, like space repetition. And that's basically repeating material that you've learned before, kind of tracing mm -hmm. your steps. And so that's where that level three book is mm -hmm. awesome for it. Yeah. You know, if you didn't get a chance to go and tackle, you know, the Italy section and the diploma text, you know, yes, there's a lot of detail there. Italy is very, very important. You did do the Italy section in your level three. Yep. And so just retracing your steps there is going to give you more of that space repetition, bring up some of the more of those details that are buried in the back of your mind. And mm -hmm. it's more likely to stick versus trying to forge a new path through your diploma text where you're likely to get lost and forget most of it. Yeah. Interesting. That's a, I mean, I don't want to say that makes me feel good because I do forget stuff very easily, <laughs> but I'm not alone. Um, but yeah, no, that was a great post. So if, if anybody has not read it yet, it's on our website, elevagewinecoaching.com under resources, mm -hmm. correct? Okay. Yep. Yeah. So no, that was a great, a great article. Um, I have a suggestion for people who have a blind tasting component to their exams coming up. Um, during these last weeks, it's often um, tempting to keep practicing blind tasting and maybe only blind tasting. And let me tell you, I mean, I did do that to some extent. And then when I would get stuff wrong, it was just like punches in the gut over and over and over again. And it really took my confidence level down because it just did. And mm -hmm. I think there is an overemphasis on the blind identification of the wine as opposed to writing out all the other sections that will gain you a lot of points. And so I highly recommend doing a lot of open label tasting these last few weeks, at mm -hmm. least as much as you are blind. Um, and yeah. open label tasting. Somebody asked me about that one time. What the heck do you mean by that? That just means you know what the wines are. Like maybe um, in your Grenache example, maybe I know I'm tasting my three Grenache, but I had my husband pour them for me, so I don't know the order they are. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I do know exactly what they are. Maybe I'm sitting right in front of them. And then 
I can make my own conclusions as to what the differences are, but I'm not completely blind. And I mm -hmm. think that that helps gain some confidence. I think that helps you identify your markers a little bit more because you're not grasping at straws as to what the variety is or what the country is. So um, I think that's just a great exercise to do. If you've mm -hmm. got a blind tasting component is balance your blinds with open label. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we see it so often when we review the examiner reports of how often the examiner's like, yeah, people will nail the wine. Yep. But the reasoning and their tasting note is fault. It, they lose all the points in that. Yeah. On it. So That's nailing crazy. the wine, yeah. you're not going to pass. Uh, you're not always going to pass. You're not guaranteed to pass just because you nailed the wine. With yeah. That. Yeah. You need to back it up. And if you don't nail the wine, you can still pass. So that's mm -hmm. what's what's great is is with that open label. So that's that's one of my high recommendations. Yeah, and I, I completely echo that because the best mm -hmm. thing that you can do right now to be a better blind taster and to prepare for the exam is get really good about being able to judge the climate of the wine in your glass. And doing that, knowing the wine, get yourself a cool climate example of grape, get yourself a warm climate, you can get a moderate in there, but especially have those two extremes that mm -hmm. you're going to be tasting roughly the same type of fruit, apple, apple, plum, plum. Get used to being able to pick that out. This tastes like a cool climate wine. This tastes like something warmer. So mm -hmm. that would be the, that would be my priority because once you do that, and once you get really good at getting that sense of the climate that this wine comes from, that narrows your big world of possibilities really quickly. Very true. Very true. The second thing I would work on is getting used to being able to call out oak. And this, you mm. the best way to do this is to look up the wines, look up the tech notes yeah. to see which one are using new oak, which are using all French oak, which are using American oak. Taste those wines. Get very familiar with those wines. And what are what is your personal markers for oak? Because that's yeah. another thing that will narrow your, take your big old world and narrow it down. Because how many wines have a price point that really merit new oak? Not many. Yeah. So if you can work at least on those two things, that will give you a huge, huge leg up on your blind tasting exam. Because even if you don't yeah. nail the wines, you do a different cool climate wine or a different warm climate wine, your notes are going to overlap so much with it. And you're going to get so many points. Yeah. And we can both attest to that because yeah. you and I did not call all the wines on yeah. our big Sam. And, you know, I'm not going to speak for you. I had some doozies, but I was at least in the ballpark. And so because I had practiced how to write the notes, and that's another thing. I mean, to go back to your practicing the handwriting, practice writing all those out because you're like, oh, I... I'll put, you know, I know sweetness level and, and body and acidity and tannin. Get in the habit of writing that shit out. Yeah. And, you know, because it sucks if you forget to mention tannins and then you've lost two points, essentially. Yeah. Two gimme points almost. So j just get in the habit and then it makes the day of the exam a lot easier because you, it's just second nature. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we did get a question from somebody. Um, I'm going to read it out. So what do you do when you feel like you've studied everything and can't fit any more in your head? And I have reached that point. I'm sure you have. Um, mm -hmm. And I, it's not the same thing as like, I, I haven't studied everything and now I'm panicking, but you're just like, I, I, I can't fit any more in here. And I keep going back over the text and I'm like, I know I've got this. I, I, I remember that. Honestly, if your exam is not right around the corner, I would just take a step back and yeah. take a breather. If you feel like you've reached that point, because you want to be reaching that point right before your exam mm -hmm. and then go in just, it is full and I'm just going to dump my knowledge all over this exam paper. But if you've got- Not quite. <laughs> you don't want to just, ah, I am. <laughs> Um, but if you're reaching that point and you've got weeks to go and, you know, going back to your point, like, you know, you're going to start forgetting things. There is that element of panic. Like, well, if I don't keep going at this pace, I'm going to forget mm -hmm. it. 
But I think it really is good just to take a step back and maybe try different methods of getting the information in the brain, listening to a podcast on whatever it is that you're studying, um, and maybe not even like a super wine geeky one, but pull up something on Vine Pair that is about whatever topic you're studying or pull up something mm -hmm. on a on a less um, wine educational site, but maybe something that's more about marketing or travel, but that something still is getting that content in your brain. But I do think if you've reached that point, and again, your exam is not immediate, um, just take a breath. You will not forget everything. Um, scale back, review your flashcards for 15 minutes and go do something else. So what's your thoughts on that? Any thoughts? Okay. I mean, I definitely, I def definitely empathize with that. It's, it is kind of almost, you're, you're burning out. You're mm -hmm. just cramming and cramming stuff into your brain, just like, ugh, on it. Yeah. And the, the way I, that I think about it is, you know, learning all these different facts and tidbits about wine, it's a lot like, you know, you're buying Legos and you keep buying new sets of Legos. And what happens to all those Legos that you have? They're, they get, get put into your bucket and they're filling up this bucket and eventually you keep cramming and adding more facts and details and they keep going into the bucket. But when you want to try to find something, eh, it's a little tough to dig through the bucket to find that one little particular piece. And eventually you keep adding more and more, it's going to get messy. The bucket's overflowing. I mean, yeah. that's the brain spilling out. Yeah. Well, what do you do? You kind of go back to some of the things we were talking about with mm -hmm. the idea of, of like retracing your steps, that mm -hmm. space repetition instead of keep constantly trying to learn new things and cram new stuff into your brain, work on the things that you know already and think about it different ways. You know, come up with different like memory devices for it. Think about how you would explain it and teach it to somebody. Because essentially what you're doing with your bucket of Legos, as facts and knowledge and tidbits that you have, is you're taking those little Legos and you're starting to piece them together. And then you can put mm -hmm. them up on the shelves. And they don't have to be big, elaborate, you know, you're making the Star Wars Death Star or something like that. You, I mean, me, I, Just I'm a little making, wing fighter. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I make little houses. When I play with my, oh, okay. my nephews, nieces and nephews, we just make, I make little houses. They make all the big elaborate stuff. I just make little houses. And maybe like a little dog and a cat with that to yeah. go with it. But those little things that you're doing, a lot of things are happening there. One, you are clearing out some space in your bucket. So yeah. you can add new things. And as you're going through your bucket and putting those little pieces together, you're stumbling across other things, other pieces of tidbits and information that you came across. I'm like, oh yeah. And then you can make that connection with something else. So yeah. my advice is, again, retrace your steps. Stop with learning new stuff. Go back mm -hmm. and do what you did before. Yeah. Just, yeah, reinforce that knowledge so that it's in your mind when you go into that exam. Um, and I don't feel like it would be a study suggestion tip talk, uh, if I didn't say these last few weeks, it is so important to take care of yourself. And, um, that's definitely a Noelism and I cannot stress that enough. Don't tell yourself, oh, I'll get enough sleep as soon as I'm done with my exam or I'll start eating better as soon as my exam's over. Start now because you want to be feeling good when you, when you take your exam. So start putting on a podcast and going for a walk. Um, then you don't need to feel guilty that you're not studying. Um, listen to your wine podcast while you're getting some fresh air, or if you're in London, put on your, your parka <laughs> because it's crappy weather. Um, but yeah, I mean, just really try to, get enough sleep. And, and this is, this is a very important, I mean, I know I just put a lot of my life into diploma and, you know, now with MW, but I'm trying to have more of a balance because this is a huge deal and, and we really want to accomplish these things, but it should not be our whole existence um, mm -hmm. because it should not define us. We should be able to do other things and have other interests and just take care of ourselves. So I really want to stress that these next few weeks, take care of yourself. Yeah. Whatever that may look like. And if you need help doing that, ping us. Yeah. yeah. No, I totally echo that. Yeah. I mean, for me, it got to the point 
where I was dreaming about diploma I've questions. heard some about your dreams. Yes. <laughs> you don't want to get to that point. I, 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 that's another regret is that I didn't take care of myself be better, meditate before bed, stop yeah. studying before bed. Like yeah. that I should have created a buffer with that. So it wasn't like there in my head that it was then haunting my dreams. Yeah, but it's something else. I mean, there's so many great like fluff TV shows now. Just put on something that you can just unplug and un unwind. Anthony Bourdain, Anthony Bourdain said shows that. are I, awesome. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm a big fan of those. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's a good good tip. And I know it's hard to do because you keep thinking, well, I only have X weeks left. I really need to. Yes, you do, but you also need to take a break. You also need to to take time to do non-wine stuff because that will let things process and then you'll be, it'll be easier to retrieve that information than if you go into your exam just uh, on edge and tense and having had anxiety dreams. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you've, you've had some doozies. Maybe you should share those sometime. <laughs> yes. Yes. And yes, it is, it is, it is hard, hard to, to do. do. Someone just said it's super hard to do. It is. Oh my gosh. And I, I am guilty of not practicing what I preach, but I'm really trying to do better at that um, with my current studies because we do, we're just really hard on ourselves, and we think, well, you know, one more chapter, one more, you know, set of flashcards, just set your timer and say, I am going to be done at whatever hour tonight and be done. It's okay. It will be there tomorrow. It will be there tomorrow. So, yeah. I empathize with you guys because I remember how I felt. I mean, this is a tense time, you know, these last few weeks. And, and I don't think that anyone ever feels like they know enough, no matter how much they've studied. So, um, you know, do what you can and reach out to us if you yeah. need help. And we've got a lot of great resources if you don't feel like talking to us. <laughs> but um, yeah, will you, why don't you tell us, uh, tell everybody a little bit about what we've got on the website for mm -hmm. members that can help you through these last few weeks? Yeah. Yeah. Noelle and I, we definitely, the, 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 the diploma is a big focus of the things that we like to coach yeah. and help with, but we are available for folks that are doing any type of certifications, whether you're going through the SOM programs, um, Wine Scholar Guilds, the Society of Wine Educators, you know, or, or even like if you just work retail or want to work retail and want to get more into wine, we can help you in all, all aspects of it. But for one of the things that caused us to, or encouraged us to start Elevaz Wine Coaching was we really wanted to develop some of the resources that we wish we had when we were going through diploma that would have made it far less stressful <laughs> for us. Right. And so the, a lot of that we've been doing, particularly with our webinar series, Noelle, she's doing a you know, deep dive immersion into Italy, which is a section that gives a lot of students trouble. Um, she's mm -hmm. done a lot with viticulture aspects and getting some of the, here's the big details that you really need to remember for exams. And then I've also been doing a webinar series, Blind Tasting Plus Theory, which is my killing two birds with one stone aspect of it. You know, it's, it's a, the approach of looking at the clues in the glass. That's something that you guys hear me talk about all the time with Mystery Grape. You know, it's just talking about it earlier here with this live. You know, if you can get really good at picking out climate in the fruit, the nature of the mm -hmm. fruit, that cool climate fruit, that warm climate fruit, jammy, crisp, ripe. That's a big, big ace in your hand. Mm -hmm. So we talk about those different clues, you know, different aspects of winemaking that shows up for different grapes, like Syrah. Syrah's got a lot of big tells. Whole clusters, uh, the pepper note, the rotundin, what causes that? We talk about those in these webinars. And we've got all, like a lot of the major grapes right now, like. Cabernet, um, Syrah, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay's coming up here in April, Grenache mm -hmm. is coming next week. I mean, I'm just kind of checking them off and going to have 11 of those grapes all done before the May D3 exams. That's so awesome. for folks that are members of Elevage Wine Coaching, you have access to all our previous recordings of the webinars that we already did. You know, they're about an hour long. We've got 20 of them so far, and then they're going to be keep adding to them. Mm -hmm. um, and then course you have access to all future webinars we also have a lot of study resources on the site 
Noelle's got some of her outlines. Uh, she's focusing on Italy because that's a big mm -hmm. area that she wants to tackle for folks. Um, I've got a lot of my cheat sheets that I use during my diploma exams. Um, got almost a thousand wine questions. Um, this is kind of more like, you know, if you like the more multiple choice, true, false, you know, versus the essay questions, but you just want to kind of keep testing yourself and some of those details, go hog wild, honey. You can spend yeah. hours there <laughs> with that. And, and we're adding new stuff to it all the time. We want to make our membership really valuable for folks. And so it's $20 a month. Um, and you can also do it for a year if you want to go and you get a little bulk savings there. But if you have an exam coming up in the next couple months, you know, you could be a member for a few months, mm -hmm. take in all these details this, that you need and enjoy it. And then oh. again, as Noelle mentioned, we're also available too for private coaching. And that's details are on our site, elevagewinecoaching.com. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like, like Amber said, we're just trying to give what we wish that we had had um, a year ago, a year plus ago. So yeah, yeah. but we get to celebrate soon. Yep at our graduation on the 11th. So um, hopefully, maybe we'll do a Motivation Monday because our, uh, our graduation's on a Monday. So, so, so I, I can't give too many details because I don't want Noelle to know, but we're getting together with our little study group that we had that got us through diploma at dinner on um, the Saturday night before graduation. Yep. And I'm gonna bring a baller bottle for everybody to enjoy. Like, you, I'm telling, you like, were teasing about that. I'm yes, so curious. Yes. And it's a magnum of a baller bottle with mm. that. So she's going to set her home whites in. No, just kidding. <laughs> I should bring that. But <laughs> actually, I'm also going to bring some Missouri wine too to go with the baller bottle too. <laughs> with that. I'm but curious. I am so excited. This is like a unicorn bottle that I've been wanting to check off my oh own my personal God. wine list to try. So we're celebrating diploma graduation. There's going to be what about 11 of us there, I think? I think so. so yeah. yeah. Magnum's enough with that plus I all the other wine curious. everybody's bringing yes if oh you think it's a baller body bottle it's it a baller bottle be. yeah okay <laughs> so, okay cool so, so yeah uh, we'll, 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 po we'll post the baller bottle actually maybe i don't know maybe i should make the baller bottle a mystery grape <laughs> do it we'll see about it. it we, we actually okay. actually we might do a mystery grape live while we're a little tipsy from the dinner <laughs> giving notes to it <laughs> for our baller bottle oh, be <laughs> and see if people can get it the Missouri wine is just going to go with the baller bottle. The Missouri wine, it's actually a Missouri port. So it'll be like a digestif. Port style. Okay. Port style. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Please don't okay. come after me. EU. Yeah. Um, so. Well, I'm excited. I'm yep. excited. And um, best of luck to everybody who's taking an exam. And also congratulations to those who got some really good results. Yeah. Um, I know we had some, some sparkling and fortified good results for people. Okay. So congratulations. That's got to be like a huge weight off your shoulders and give you some serious momentum going into future exams. So yeah. these are not easy exams to pass. And if you passed with merit or distinction, you should feel like a baller because that is yep. damn hard to do. So congratulations. Yeah. You guys are awesome. Okay. Take care. And we're here for you guys. So reach out if we can do anything, but you've got this. Take care. Okay, see ya.